second best team. They beat KC, but they lost to the Saints, whatever. Just put them all at the top. They're pretty close. The Rams, on a power rating basis, are about five or six points better than the Bears in most power ratings. They are the second best team in the league behind the Saints on all the ones that I look at, including my own. The Saints have really earned it. They play a little bit more defense than a lot of teams. Now they've now that the Rams have to face a pissed off Bears team who lost that last game pretty much due to their backup quarterback being less than inept. I mean, Chase Daniel just said, "Here, have a, here. Start with a touchdown, Giants. Uh, we're going to start. We're going to give you a handicap. We're going to give you seven points." And then he pretty much couldn't do much the whole game. He was missing open receivers, uh, fumbling the ball all over the place. The Bears get them to overtime, which they should have went for two. That was Nagy's mistake, by the way. They should have went for two. For two, they had the momentum. The clock was at zero. Um, they they didn't have the home field advantage, which gives them an official's advantage. They didn't have that. They should have went for two, but you gave it to Chase Daniels, and he fumbles two snaps immediately. You know that it, they they kicked a field goal. The Bears could have drove for a touchdown, but either way, they know that they know they are better than the Giants. Giants had a trick play with Odell Beckham. They're pissed off. The power ratings pretty much show this spread is correct, right? Bears plus three. We actually got it early at plus four and a half, but right now it's in at plus three. Everyone knows Mitch is going to play. Probably could have actually played last week too, but the Bears took a gamble. Now, let's talk a little bit about this game and this spread and why I like it. First of all, when the Rams play the Chiefs at home, right? They're at home. They got smoked, really, by the Kansas City. Andy Red led offense. They allowed fifty over 50 points to that offense. The Rams were outgained and still won the game by 65 yards. They only won due to four turnovers and two that resulted in a touchdown by uh by the Chiefs. You know, it was a I mean, their quarterback Holmes did amazing. You know, he was amazing except for giving up the the touchdowns and turnovers, right? They would have won the game. Patrick Mahomes would have won it if if he didn't make those big mistakes, but you know, we know who runs that offense, right? Andy Reid. And we know where Matt Nagy came from just last year calling those same plays. Andy Reid. <laughs> Another glaring fact to me here is that uh, the Chiefs have a terrible defense. They allowed over 400 yards to the Rams, while the Bears ranked number four in total yards per game. Complete opposites of the Chiefs at 317. And they're playing at home. You know, this is a home game for the Bears, not at the Rams. And the Rams just got done clinching the NFC West, making this kind of a small letdown spot for them. And it's also a little bit of a sandwich spot because they have to face the Super Bowl champion Eagles next week. Okay? You know, so, I mean, the Rams might come in trying. You know, they get home field advantage if they win out, but... um. I, don't, I, I think that this is more of a kind of relax a little bit. It's not that big of a deal if you lose game. The Bears have the better defense than the Chiefs. Their offense isn't quite like the Chiefs, but it's still the same types of plays. The Bears have some skill players. they got Cohen, Robinson, you know, Anthony Miller. Taylor Gabriel's been ripping up. They have the firepower to do this again, and they're motivated at home. Mitch is back. And I expect them to turn it up at home. Take the Bears and take the money line. And then remember to bear down. All right. Now it is time for the sharp side of the force. Sharp side of the force is brought to you by uwager.eu. Please visit the oddsbreakers.com. Click on the uwager banner for a 50% one time snap bonus. Let's get going with uh, some of the sharp movement. And this is early sharp plays on the NCAA bowl games. 
and it, some of this is going to change a little bit. So next week, you know, if you're not going to make a lot of plays till next week, make sure you pay attention after some of the initial line moves. I mean, the, the lines have already moved. Um, a lot of the limits were already raised. So I think that you're going to have an opportunity uh, to possibly have close to the same lines next week. Just make sure it, it's not right before the game unless you like the dog or the or the side you think it's going to go against. So starting out, uh, there's an initial line move on uh, ASU. The Sharps hit Fresno State minus 2.5 to minus 4.5, and, and that's because of Nikhil Harry going out for ASU. Then the next significant one was... Middle Tennessee State, it went from 7.5 down to plus 7, but uh, it's actually getting bought back on Appalachian State at minus 7. So it wasn't too significant. Uh, UAB was a significant uh, double action. You know, 79% of the tickets are on UAB, but only um, at, at, they're playing NIU, by the way, Northern Illinois, who just beat Buffalo. But uh, 92% of the money is on UAB. So there's some dual action on that one right there. A big one is San Diego State playing Ohio. Uh, 50% of the tickets are on San Diego State. uh, But 88% of the money, the spread went went from plus 4.5 down to plus 3. I'm not sure why that is. Ohio's a pretty solid team. I'm going to have to look into that one a little bit more. I didn't get to that one yet. The next one is uh, Marshall. At Central, South Florida, South Florida uh, had some sharp money on it at 46% to 66%. I believe they play at home <laughs> against Marshall in their bowl game at their stadium. So uh, plus three down to plus two and a half. The next one it would be BYU hosting Western Michigan. Well, not hosting, but they went from uh, 39% of the tickets are on BYU, but 71% of the money, and it moved from minus 11 to minus 12. 32% difference there. You have Memphis, minus 2.5 all the way up to minus 5 against Wake Forest. A 33% difference on that one. 90% of the money is on Memphis there. Then you have Houston, Plus five down to plus three, 44 to 63 percent of the money hosting Army. Not sure if I have a huge opinion on that one. Army obviously still has a game left. We have Hawaii and uh, Louisiana Tech. Now, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs are a sharp side on this one. Looks like 51% of the tickets are on them, but 78% of the money. Boston College against Boise State went from plus 3.5 to plus 3. 67% of the tickets on Boston College, 89% of the money. So dual action on that one. Uh, Minnesota against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech went from minus 3.5 to minus 4. 71% to 90%. They have a great rushing attack but obviously the way that minnesota stopped wisconsin lately I, I'm, I'm not excited to go get a georgia tech ticket next one you have is vanderbilt against baylor baylor plus six and a half down to plus three and a half uh 59 of the tickets and 96 percent of the money are on baylor it's huge Then you have Purdue against Auburn. Sharp money on Purdue. Plus five down to plus four. 65% of the tickets are on Purdue, but 89% of the money. You know, uh, isn't that Purdue team the one that Ohio State got crap for? (laughs) Now they're playing Auburn and sharp money on them. Plus four. All right. Syracuse is the next one playing West Virginia. Plus seven. Uh 20% 20% difference there. I'm not I, I, I'm not sure if I'm getting involved in anything like that. Uh, Iowa State was a big sharp side from plus 6.5 down to plus 3.5. 52% of the tickets are on, on Iowa State, but 91% of the money. Uh, Michigan moved from minus 6 to minus 7.5. That was a sharp move. Went through that key number. Then you have Virginia went from plus six and a half to plus four. 
And that was pretty much most of the significant stuff here. I mean, there's there's some smaller stuff, but it's a little bit early. Mississippi State, minus 5 to minus 6, hosting Iowa. And I'm not so sure I agree with that one either. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's go into sharp totals. Not a lot of totals re- reported yet. I do know that the Temple under was hit pretty hard. It's, it's at 56 right now. Uh, they're playing Duke. So... You know, Duke with that great defense, 38% difference on that. Then you have uh, Ohio State under 58 was a, more of a sharp side on this one. But uh, most of the totals will be reporting a lot more next week. The Bama one is all the way up to 80 and a half, by the way. And there's dual action on that. And that's... That's uh, <laughs> that game. If Oklahoma scores like they're supposed to, that thing can go to a hundred. I mean, easily. I don't see Alabama doesn't score fifty-five, sixty because they're going to be trying against that Big Twelve defense. So there you have it. Let's move into a little bit of NFL sharp money. It looks like. New York Jets at Buffalo went from plus three and a half down to plus three. It's a revenge spot for them getting blown out at home. 35% of the tickets on the Jets, but 61% of the money. Looks like the Colts have a little sharp money at Houston at plus four and a half. I think they're going to keep it close after that embarrassment last week. An 18% difference. Uh, Miami had some sharps hit it against the Patriots. Plus nine down to plus seven and a half. 28% 28% of the tickets of on uh, Miami, but 53% of the money. That thing went down. And then you have San Francisco, plus 5.5 down to plus 4 against the Broncos. 40% difference. 26% of the tickets on San Fran, 66% of the money. Now, the Denver just lost Emmanuel Sanders as well as uh, one of their safeties this week. Jeez. Lots of uh, bad luck for them. Then you have... Pittsburgh at Oakland went down from plus 13 to plus 11, probably because of Oakland's great play last week. Now, I can't I can't lay anything on Oakland. They did play the Chiefs really well, but Pittsburgh does have a better defense than the Chiefs. There's a 32% difference there. 47% of the tickets are on Oakland, but 79% of the money. That could be the right side there. And then, of course, you have um, a little bit of the uh, Vikings took a little bit of sharp money. of the tickets on the Vikings, but 44% of the money. Now, without further ado, let's bring in Mr. Brian Edwards. And now I'd like to welcome back a very decorated professional handicapper. Help us out with some basketball, football, UFC, you name it. You can find him on the Games Galore podcast and Vegas Insider. And, of course, get his picks and plays at BrianEdwardsSports.com. You can tweet him at VegasBEdwards. How the hell you doing, Brian? I'm doing great, Kiev. Thanks again for having me. Uh, what's going on in your world? Oh, lots, man. Lots. It's like I tell everybody, ABCs, always be capping. And right now, it's that time of year because you got the college basketball going. You got NBA for the NBA cappers. You got the bowl season, and everyone's trying to get ahead of those line moves. NFL's hot. My man, busy as hell, and I'm sure you are too. Yeah, I mean, five sports simultaneously in November and December. A little bit of a reprieve without the full rotation of college football regular season this week, but. Not you know I do UFC also and we're in the midst of a seven week stretch with eight events so mm-hmm. uh, there's not I don't know that forty eight hours in every day would be enough to be on top of everything I'd like to be on top of but um I, I'm I, I'm on t- as top of it as I can be uh, which is to say I'm really way behind in college hoops but I've definitely um got to watch a lot of games here the last two or three days which I've enjoyed without you know football interruption and um looking forward to ufc 231 i know you wanted to talk about that later in the show and like you said you know 
uh, with the bowl games, you know, it, it's so key, all the coaching changes, you know, who's losing their offensive coordinator, uh, you know, who's head coach bowl. 